Financial Inclusion Week is an annual gathering of the global inclusive finance community to share ideas and research, concerns and opportunities. It's a time to think big and to imagine a brighter future. And with these big ideas, it's important to remember why and for whom we are working to help low income and marginalized people improve their well being, resilience, and livelihoods through financial services that are designed to meet their needs. With this in mind, we reached out to consumers and inclusive finance experts from around the world to hear what worries them, what excites them, and what is needed as we look to the future of inclusive financial services. We are living in a complicated and increasingly digital world. Low-income families have complex and often urgent financial needs. They are also the families that have the smallest margins for error. Financial tools need to work for them so that they can manage irregular income and expenses, access safety nets when they need them, and invest in their future when opportunities arise. The real risk is of a digital divide, so that we have a society in which those with access to the internet and all the power that the digital revolution brings forge ahead, leaving those who don't way behind. And we have a very bifurcated society. And I think that is a very real risk that we need to pay significant attention to. <laughs> Uh, I think they must give more opportunity or like to educate okay. because most of the people they don't know how to do the internet okay. banking. Okay. So to educate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. ATM and can again in my problem that the mono was not the ATM. ATM and be there again. Additionally, for many clients, there remains a lack of trust, transparency, and confidence in using financial services. And innovating to find ways to meet clients where they are continues to be a critical focus for the inclusive finance community. <laughs> Icyo gihe rero ni yaransobanuriye ngo ngo amafaranga ngo arenze arenze 100 ingahe 150 ibihumbi 150 ngo bagenda bakuraho magana maga igihumbi ni igihumbi rani magana 5 ni ibintu nk'ibyo ntago umuntu ababyumva neza ntago ababyumva neza giye nabonye haba utuntu tudu tudupa tudu twafishaje bafisha bakwafisha ari bakavuga ati Aha naha amafaranga kuvana kugira hana naya nka kwa kundi bagira mu modoka ngo kuva kugira hari ya kugira hari ya naye kugira ngo umukiriya bisobanukirwe neza nange ntabwo mbyumva We can meet the moment with new innovations in digital financial services Digital technology is bringing products to new populations lowering costs and bringing new levels of privacy control and customization to users Usually when we think about small businesses we're thinking about the entrepreneurs the people who are building the small businesses, who are expanding them, who are looking for finance to invest and grow those businesses. But there are a lot of people who are attached to small businesses who are not the entrepreneurs. Those small businesses are interesting and important because they employ so many people. And yet those employees often don't have great financial possibilities. They also need financial tools to help smooth the ups and downs because their employment is often unsteady. The greatest innovation that I've seen in the past year, that's a challenging question. I think that ultimately it comes down to what is an innovation that I see that is solving some of the most pressing issues. And certainly in the African context, increased pressure on the consumer and micro entrepreneurs wallet and um, also uh, decreased access to capital have been real concerns. So for me, something that has stood out has been the emergence of Save Now, Buy Later, uh, which is an innovative digitized take on the traditional lay-by product. 
And I think that in a time where there's a lot of talk around AI revolution, you would agree that, you know, access to things like smartphones is really, really critical. What I'm really interested in seeing though, I think in the next year or two is the participation of banks and mobile money operators in this space with uh, the integration of the customer experience uh, into digital wallets, mobile money wallets, provision of trust accounts, and really providing the security that I think could scale this product in the coming years. Digital financial services, like any new technology, also generates new risks, if not designed and deployed carefully. If not designed well, digital financial services may be a double-edged sword for the poor. Donors, governments, and the private sector have the responsibility to ensure that the people they support are protected from harm and that these products truly meet their needs. The question is no longer if inclusive digital finance is relevant to our objectives of ending extreme poverty, but how. As more and more climate-related events take place that impact people's lives and livelihoods, we must increasingly turn our focus to how financial products and services can meet these new demands. And the other obvious big concern is climate change. And this is really scaring me. We needed to start acting on this a decade ago, and now finally we're seeing some serious action on it. Los efectos del cambio climático son muy preocupantes, lamentablemente no solo afecta a, al ser humano, la, afecta también a lo que es la madre tierra, afecta a los cultivos. La petición que yo tuviese sería eh, implementar un seguro a lo que es la producción que nosotros tenemos, porque como le explicaba más antes, ten, tenemos mucho, muchos problemas con lo que es las inclemencias del tiempo. O se puede hacer un seguro, tal vez si es que se puede o tal vez a, a, a alguna flexibilización en esa parte, claro, previo, previo ver, verificación, ¿no ve? Eh? Si esto es lo que yo quisiera más o menos que nos tomen en cuenta en esa parte. Los retos más importantes para el acceso a los créditos verdes principalmente, realmente no tenemos disponible principalmente en el mercado, ¿verdad? que ofrece esos servicios a la población, a los productores o a un grupo. I'd like to see our community focus more on shared accountability. The idea of financial inclusion is now expanding to concepts like financial health, financial resilience, well-being, well beyond the access and usage metrics that we've been used to for some time. We're now beginning to ask the question, what does responsible finance look like? Who do we expect to be responsible? Why should they be responsible? In order to get to that answer, I do think we all have to understand the role that we specifically play in contributing to inclusive finance, financial health, resilience for excluded and vulnerable communities. What excites me the most is the opportunity we have to foster a new wave of progress in financial inclusion, but this time not just in access and music, but really in utility, that is in the impact financial inclusion can make for its beneficiaries. And this because we can leverage two main trends. The first one is the power of data-driven innovation, which will allow fintechs and other digital financial services to leverage the digital data trails of low-income individuals and micro-firms to provide more people and firms with more and better financial services. And the second trend is the fast growth in impact and other socially-minded investment that can scale these innovations for greater impact. By shared accountability, we can all understand what the private sector is supposed to do, what the government is supposed to do, what civil society can do, and what development partners can do to help make our financial services ecosystems more responsible and better suited for the lives of those who need them the most. We're excited to tackle these issues together this week. Thank you for joining Financial Inclusion Week 2023.